<laughs> done, but I took pictures and put them in a file for him. So. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. This is Jack, your host extraordinaire for the uh, uh, Amazing Scale Modelers Hangouts. This is the Sunday Hangout. This is uh, February 3rd. We found out yesterday that uh, the Groundhog told us it's going to be spring soon, right around the corner. So uh, only 19 times in like 100, some 150, 60 years since uh, he's been around. That's an old rat. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I got a lot of things done. I got some things done uh, downstairs and all that sort of thing. We're going to share some things. We're going to talk about yesterday's Across the Pond Hangout. That will be about the 3D printing, but not so much specifically about 3D printing, but about putting things or extra things onto your models, uh, whether it be scratch build uh, or out of the kit. And I'd like also to say we don't have any community builds. <laughs> Uh, but I will say that Google Plus Community will be done April 2nd. Uh, actually, no, Google Plus will be done April 2nd. But the, uh, the Amazing Scale Modelers Google Plus Community will be done on the 28th of February. So if you're watching and you're a part of that community only, do not want to go over to Facebook. That is fine. Uh, there are instructions on the Google Plus page, how to get to mewe.com. It's another social platform, no advertising, and they pretty much uh, secure your privacy if that's what you're into. So get yourselves over there as well. And also, I was thinking about, well, because of this change, got to redo the uh, shop card. And this is the current shop card. Uh, and this is this went out, uh, I don't know, uh, around the August, September time frame. Yeah. Uh, yep. But we've got that little red square out of there so there's no more google google no more google and the new one if you're paying attention this is the if you're paying attention to the invites uh the the hangouts were, were fixed but this is the proof of the new one and it says me we and facebook so well, uh, I'm getting these printed up uh sometime but i thought you know what if you guys want to get into uh, maybe doing some design or something for a shop card, and if I like it, I'll print it, and you can have one, and everybody else can too. Uh, so we'll, we're, that's something that we're going to do all year for this year. Uh, Tony, Tony's here with us. Uh, one of his incarnations, I'm going to be printing. So Tony, the one that you did about six years ago is going to get printed, if you remember it. You do. Okay. Do. So I'm going to definitely print that as a special uh, vintage thing going. Vintage uh, 2013 or something like that. That was a good year, Jack. That was a very good year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the, how did that novel begin? Never mind. It's a, it was a good year, but it wasn't a good year or, or something Victorian. I don't know. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody who has showed up and live chat is open. Hello, Mark. I got something to show you tonight. John Paul. And of course, uh, I think Kevin, is that right from NASCAR? Darwin, good to see you there. Ken, hello, everyone. So uh, what are you doing there, Buck? What am I doing? Yeah, I'm what free, are you doing uh, in, in my not for uh, North Dakota? North Dakota. Uh, <clears throat> freezing, you know. It's freezing. Degrees uh, Mother, right Nature, now. Mother Nature's decided that she doesn't like North Dakota anymore. So <laughs> uh, we're under a uh, winter storm right now. So we're officially, I don't know, I think we're at nine plus inches right now. Oh. And it's negative 10. So yeah, I decided to hobbit today, hide in my hole. And I got quite a bit of work done. I'm almost done with the C117, which I will show you in just a second. And then I decided on my last video that I uploaded to ask people that subscribe to my channel what they'd like to see me do next until I get some of the bigger builds stuff all get together for that. So the winner was, and I've never built one, so <laughs> be happy with me, Jim. Mm -hmm. ah, ship. Aircraft carrier. Yes, the USS Hornet. So... I will be doing my first ever ship build, and uh, I'll do a I'll do a video series on that so everybody can see how bad I screw it up. <laughs> um, but uh, 
let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let me get some things opened up before I get to you, before I start sharing. <laughs> well, incidentally, if y'all are all watching, get some libation. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I, said, you know, I am not watching Super Bowl, so I'm yeah. hanging out with my buddies instead. So, well, well, very good. Uh, there's a lot of other people that watch the Super Bowl. All right. Kevin from Utah, that is correct. So, here we go. Um, Let's get this opened up right. I, I try to do something new tonight, Jack, and try to get everything ready. Try to instead of just holding it up. Yeah. Well, my computer's acting slow, guys. Sorry about this. Well, let's hope it doesn't crash on me. You know what? Uh, are you done with that yet? I'm almost done with it. Well, do some nice uh, vanity shots and post them because uh, you're you're going to be community cover, by the way, on that. Oh, well, I definitely, uh, I'm just trying. Sorry about the black screen, guys. My computer's acting up. Hold on. I'm going to. Oh, just, just, like just looks like you're in the dark. That's all. Yeah. You know, I'm always in the dark. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> just picture comes up. <laughs> just give my computer a stick. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I remember those. Just give me a second. Sorry about this, guys. Did it stop sharing? No. Nope. Oh crap. I see. Um yeah, oh, you yeah. know, I, I think I know what problem you're having. Uh I found that I need two I do two screens when I broadcast because I just bring up stuff on one screen and then I look at you guys on another. Uh whenever what I want to bring up on a picture is on another screen, I can do it. But I think what you have to do is basically Click on to the Hangouts group. Well, I don't. I don't know. There's a way to do it, and I, it's hard to describe. Well, the way I find it is you got to bring the picture up into Picture Viewer, and then click on the share, and then do the video share after right. after you've got the image up. All right, here we go. Just did that. So let's see if this worked. Because I am technology illiterate. I was born in '77. Oh really? Okay. Shit, I remember yeah. 1977. <laughs> Very All well. Right, so there the we are. There you are. So here's the base that I'm doing for this. Yeah. Um. And basically, all it is is all I did was sandpaper. But I don't know. Tell me if you've heard this technique, guys. So to make the tar strips, um, for the joints. Yeah. Have you ever heard of mixing your black paint with cornstarch? Well, I've heard of that, yeah. That's what I did right there. So, And it gives it that really nice, realistic tar look. Um, so there's the base getting finished and drying. I actually put it away because I was like, yeah, I better stop screwing with this. So, <laughs> um, ah. so that's what she's going to look like on the base. Wow. Wow. And. And like I said, and at the last picture, um, for you guys on live, not knowing, when I got this kit from Brian and when he got this kit, the canopy, the clear parts was not included with this kit. And after a few months of fighting with Rebel and just reaching out, it's like the clear parts are a ghost. They don't exist whatsoever. So I had an idea, and I'll show you at the end, but some more nice glamour shots. <clears throat> Still looking good. Yeah. Now, yes, I did decide to go ahead and do the exhaust on the wings, and we'll see it on the underside. I, for those on live, and I know Jack and Jim and everybody knows, I don't make my model showroom unless it's a car, and I really don't build cars. So uh, when I build starships or um, military equipment, aircraft guns whatever it's gonna have a little bit of age to it and a little bit of distress i think it just gives it more life but that looks great mm -hmm. uh, i really like that i really 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 like that I particularly like not just the detail you gave the wings uh but the openings of the 
uh, in the intake on the engines, uh, a, a different kind of metal, and it's just it looks it looks pretty realistic. And the uh, a wing the wings front edge uh, a different color, possibly patched. Uh, it could be a patch. I don't know. Uh, but well, that's actually supposed to be the flaps. The oh, those are flaps. flaps. Oh, okay. And, and all the research I did, almost every model um, that they rolled out. Actually, the the Ford flaps were um, aircraft aluminum. So, right, right. So, went with that, and then here's a side view of her. Ooh, you got her belly opened. Yep, she's on the ground. She's ready to load troops. So, and yes, I've actually ridden in one of these, and they're loud as hell. <laughs> All those transports are. Yep. Is that just a personnel carrier, or is that also equipment? Um, it is a equipment, personnel, and um, basically this this transport, the C-117, mm -hmm. was supposed to phase out the C-130 Hercules. Yeah. But the C-130 is such a damn workhorse that... It can still do jobs that that just can't do. Oh, well, yeah. and the C-130 can take off on a short runway. Yeah. Where this one can but uh, there's uh, the primary view of the engines. And what I did here is uh, inside, and when I take some glamour shots, I'll show you the, um, let me see if I can, let me go back, see if we get a view of those. No, nope. damn it. Um, I'll take some glamour shots. I used all clad for this, and the uh, intake fans, and then, um, I did an all clad burn exhaust paint for the exhaust. So there's another top view. And right here, this isn't actually, I, I did go back and do some panel etching and I did use my Tamiya uh, panel line wash, but I actually found out I can do pin line decals. Mm -hmm. That's what these are right here. Those are pin line decals. Oh, like really? that. Yep. I never want to do them again. Um, <laughs> you, you use like a Sharpie to do that? Uh, yeah. The, well, the, the, I basically cut them off the sheet and trimmed them as close as I could. And then oh, it's a decal. It's yeah, a decal. decal. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a decal. And then I just went back through with a panel panel line wash to give it a little more accent but right here yeah in fact right here that's an actual decal so okay i thought so maybe you went into the uh panel lines with a uh uh sharpie you can actually oh, get it you can actually get a tape for that too oh really yeah very thin tape but you can buy yeah. the tape well i found out i kind of oh my god i fought with them forever i mean it was get them set then try to squeeze the air and the water out and they move and then I have to put more water to move. Oh my God. Yeah. I can't let these things for a day. Yeah. So here's the underside. Ooh. The belly of the beast. Yep. So one trick um, for anybody on the live chat, if you're going to build this um, and if you decide to do like I did with gears down, the rear landing gears do not, um, go down far enough um what i mean by that is the belly here will actually sit on the ground before the gear so it kind yeah. of rocks they don't extend uh, far enough yeah. yeah they don't extend far enough they did not get that measurement right um so that was something i learned with that so you can um either go uh, landing gear bays closed or do like I did, but you might want to add a little bit of styrene to extend the gears down, maybe an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. And then there's another view. I mean, it looks really good, but they're just not far enough down. This part right here actually right. touches. Right, right. But no, there's a good view of the yaw clad that I did on the exhaust. Ah, yes. And I really do like all clad. It's a fun paint. Yeah, uh, is it stinky? 
yeah, I, I wear a breath mask and I got my ventilator going. Like, no, tomorrow my exhaust fumes. I would not do that. I don't like stinky things. I got, I'm pretty sensitive to it. I don't use them often. I, I only kind of use them with the aircraft built or anything I really want to highlight metal on. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Kevin uh, makes a point uh, on the live chat that said that he had to buy that fine tape once. On uh, He bought it on eBay. Um, working on my live stream startup and missing info or something. I don't know what that means. Uh, Carwin is watching the Super Bowl. He said he's going to be uh, tuning every now and again. Uh, John Paul loves that plane. He says a great job so far. Well, thank you, John. And then here's my scratch belt part. So contributing to the to the hangout tonight. So like I said, the the, the canopy, it, the windows, everything was missing from the kit. So what I'm doing is while it's on the on the ramp, um, I'm putting a, a tarp over the windscreen so to protect the windows. Um, it's basically like yeah, this is sitting in. Iraq or it's sitting in Kuwait or you know somewhere in Afghanistan so we want to protect the windscreen so I am I basically all this is is a very thin piece of styrene that I heated up with a um, heat gun and I just use my fingers to to mold the folds um, with the plane and do some of the the folds in the tarp itself to give it a more realistic look then basically I primed it shadowed it, appreciated it, and then painted it in olive drab. And then, like I said, too bad Randall's not here because I would give him such mad props. I am actually um, learning how to tie lines in. Um, to help Jacob, actually, I, I decided to do this so I could help Jacob with the Titanic when it comes time to do the rigging. And I find out I don't like this very much. But... I think it's going to be really cool when it's done. And let's see. And that's it, guys. And soon we will have start work on the USS Hornet. All right. Very cool. Very good job there, mister. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, this is the uh, community cover for the MeWe community. And this one is done by John Hunt. Very uh, nice. So, uh, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Um, and he has the roof down too on this uh, shot. Uh, I'd like to have seen more shots of this, like from behind and maybe the interior, coaster of the interior. Uh, but this George Barris, uh, uh, car has always been very interesting only because of the uh, the uh, convertible top being such an odd length yeah yeah so uh, very nice paint job very nice very clean oh wow oh yeah it uh, it most certainly is it most certainly is I like that it's just a very sharp red very nice mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, moving on. How you doing there, Jim? Uh, I'm doing fine there, Jack. Well, still working away at the uh, my lifeboat. And I got some pictures here. It'll be easier showing with pictures than looking at that. Are we doing one I got plank a, a week? Hmm? One plank a week? Oh, uh, trying to get a little faster, but it's still slow to work at things. Oh, my God. You're amazing, man, doing that. Okay. Week. I'm going to give it a bit of a slideshow here of what's going on. So this is like the beginning of the planking and that going on. The first, you got a wet fit. So you got to wet the plank and shape it to, to the frame and then let it dry. And then once it's dried, then you got to shape and then start gluing it in place. With the Tremendous amount of usage of clamps. <laughs> yep. You certainly do need a lot of that. So that's just bring the first one and then get it then to get the planks. You know, I use it with the 
sanding stick to work it down because you have to thin out the edge towards well, here. So this is when you get down to here, it's got well, you almost paper thin at this edge. So you have to thin it out and shape it so it's angled too to uh, get it to fit right. To fit right and to have more of a glue surface, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I do that both sides. Literally, this stuff is fairly easy, but then you gotta you clamp the hell out of it. <laughs> clamp it down, shape it. We work on the second layer. The other thing was interesting is because he needed a seven needed uh, the planks are seven mils wide, and I need five mils between planks on center board. So oh. I found I had a I had a scrap piece of wood that was exactly five mils wide, and so I've been using using that as a spacer. Worked out great. <laughs> yeah, you said you had. <laughs> well, I have, but I've I've turned it into a jig, so it's no longer a scrap; it's now a tool. <laughs> yeah, it's just working along with that. And I love these clamps because you can you can adjust the pressure down mm -hmm. as to how much pressure, so you're not going to mark the wood up too much. Yeah, that's the thing about the spring uh, clamps that uh, don't have control over. With the fixed control, yeah, no, no, they're they're famous for leaving. I've seen guys even with their plastic models who use the spring clamps, and they weren't careful when they come back. They had marks where all the clamps were left on the model. So. Well, if yeah, if they clamp those clamps have like a, a wide surface uh, to clamp down on. Yeah, it won't leave a mark. But the problem is, you could like right there at the tip of the bow, bow or bow. The bow, yeah. Uh, no. you, you really the bow you, plate, yeah. Yeah, you really can't use a big surface like that. You really got to you see what you're doing is you're using the very tip of the clamp to get that in there. Yeah, uh, you're not using a full surface that you could possibly use. Well, I'll show you how I actually had to convert using these. Nor I was using binder clips for a while. Oh, really? But once I got up higher, the binder clip method didn't work, so I had to come up with another method. But uh, so you can see, I'm using oh, a wow. binder clip here. Mm -hmm. Let's work our way down. See now, what I can do is I can put the clamp across to the the center joint and across, and I can hold the edge right in. I can clamp it right in to work along. I had these plastic clamps, but they are useless. You can't get any amount of positive pressure on them, not to what I wanted. So I had to go and invest in some more. More bar clamps, uh -huh. and this is the one I was, where I'm working. This is where it's at right now. Wow! Wow! Getting closer to the top, though, but it's, uh, it's a slow process. Well, yeah, it is. Uh -huh. I got you. You're going to finish your uh, the community build from last year next year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it sometimes. Wow. Yeah, well, you don't want drying time in that, too. Yeah, yeah, but that's the whole thing. Like when you do the wet forming, you clamp it all up for the the wet forming, and then you got to wait a good part of the day for it to dry all out. And then when it's done, you know, that, then do the same thing on the other side. So you've got both sides done, and then you got to trim it and sand it all ready to get ready to glue. And then glue it, and but I also re-wet once I get it shaped, and the ends sanded and shaped, and that I have to re-wet the ends again so that they fold a bit, uh -huh. and then then glue and clamp it all down. So cool. you end up with a clamp monster like this. <laughs> That's uh, that's one of the uh, scale modeling rules. Can't have too many clamps. Nope. Can't have enough clamps. Yep. Can't have enough clamps. <laughs> so is that rule 20, Jack? Huh? 
Is that going to be rule 20, right? Actually, no, that's already been a rule. <laughs> I don't remember reading that rule yet. Uh, well, I, I can tell you. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh my gosh, Jim! I'll just gonna uh, keep 20, Yeah, well, the next one is going to be twenty, but I don't have one yet. Uh, nah. Can't have too many clamps. Was pretty early on. Yeah. Uh, number nine, actually, you cannot have. All right, to that's nine. Yeah. Like you said, Jim, I'll, I'm going to leave that to you. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, you bring up an interesting thing, you know, just for sci-fi out there, because um, I'm going to get ready to get to at some ship? point start on the Cylon Raider. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to have Jacob Titanic, but the Cylon Raider. So I was yeah. reading an interesting tidbit. The very last episode when he destroys that model ship that Adamo was working on. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that. It was actually Actually, a museum piece that was worth like twenty five thousand dollars, and they didn't know um, Edward James almost that it was an actual metal from a museum, and yeah. he went into that drunk rage and destroyed it. As I was looking at what you're doing and how much time it takes, I'd be like, "Good thing the guy that that thing's dead because he'd just be pissed." Oh yeah, you figure if you're building one of those big ships, you know. Like one of those big, uh, tall ships in that model kits. That's why I can understand. Like if you were going to build like a Victory and a wooden kit, they tell you to set aside three to five years to build it. Wow. Well, Mark, I can't believe uh, it. No, I'm only the one building you. Yeah. Uh, Mark says you have what? the your patience is astounding. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying it. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. Learning a lot with it. Well, you know, uh, Mark, uh, there's a lot of trees in uh, Canada. He's got to use some of them up. <laughs> yeah, Canada's got the trees. North Dakota, not so much. <laughs> North Dakota has the cold. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's your contribution to the world. So that's where I'm at anyways with that. So. Oh, excellent. And I have the next uh, 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 modeler. Oh, the oh, next view. Oh, community cover. Oh, the, the community cover. Uh, this is Mark Logan and his 57 Nomad. Uh, and while you guys were talking, I was kind of taking a look at this. So I'll kind of zoom in on that little logo there. Very nice. Oh, wow. Very nice. Nice job, because I'm pretty sure that's molded into the kit. Yep. And uh, he set it onto a nice little diorama setting. I don't know why he's got the hood up uh, on all these shots. Maybe it's broken down. He just wants to show the, the in engine. But it's it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I think I think Jack, I'm gonna have to get into cars. There's a nice <laughs> yeah. lot of detail in this. If your paint skills, I think you would be right at home with cars. I really do because I think the major, I think like ninety percent of a car build is how well you do the body. Yeah. You know, uh, and an interior will be the other ten percent. But sometimes it depends on how you want to go with it, either the engine or the interior or both. But really, um, I have painted uh, cars using Duplicolor car paint. Go to the uh, go to Auto Advanced Auto or whatever those places are, and buy actual car paint, and it turns out like it would on a car, uh, and it's it's great because uh, you can polish it, you can do all kinds of things with it, make it look nice and pretty. So, I, I would say if anything, Buck, uh, just to kind of you know play around with your painting skills because you're pretty good at paint. Thank you. So, Thank you. uh. uh Tony is very thoughtful today. He slipped uh, and hurt himself because he's running back and forth in and out because there was a plane crash not too far from where he lives. <laughs> and 
and he's and his Death Star is operational. I think that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Shot a plane down already. Oh no, you don't use those lasers like uh, Simon does, do you? No. You use a real thing. You use a planet killer stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? What are you doing? Um. Well. Uh. As you've seen. I'm about this far on this mess. It's not a mess. It looks it's not a mess, really man. Good. Look at that. Uh, That's I crazy. Think, I think it looks great. And uh, so I'm putting in, you know, girders and stuff. I'm going to start working on the floors. Probably, probably today. I'll probably start putting some in. And uh, get the cardboard and cut out maybe something and see how you're going to put that together, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cereal box cardboard. That'd probably be a good idea. Just at least to get the circle sizes for each floor. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's right. easy to fit easy to fit card than it is the plastic. Yeah. yeah. I will do that. That's a great idea. I have plenty of cardboard. So, no, oh, that's as far as I've gotten. I started working on the top. I got the dish put in. Uh, camera. It needs some touch-up. So... And then I got to cut this, the whole top part apart. But I'm going to wait until I get the bottom part done before I start working on the top. Because if the bottom part doesn't work out, why do the top half? <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly got a point there. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, you did. Post a picture of the laser eye. Now I can't find it. Was it on Facebook or MeWe? Yeah, Facebook. Facebook? Yeah. Well, then you posted it just on your... Uh... It's it's on there. Well, well okay. How about this, uh, Tony? Put down at the end of your Gosh. Uh, there you are. All right. I always do that. Why do I always do that? I don't know. Because it's highlighted. What are you doing? There it is. Uh, so what's so bad about this? The bottom right. See that smudge? Oh, that's just lighting. That's not. I need to fix that, and I need to re-putty it. And then up at the top right, there's a bit of a flat spot that I'll have to re-putty in. Explain how you did that. It was pretty clever. I just, well, I cut the circle out with a with a, a compass with a, it's a circle cutter. And then the piece that I cut out, I just flipped it backwards and glued it back into place. That's pretty clever. <laughs> I would have thought of that. <laughs> and uh, a nice comment here. Uh, you may... Uh, Primer when ready, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but certainly that's a, a pretty cool build that you're doing. I, I don't know. So I probably do something bigger, but that's something you already had kicking around, a clear plastic something or another. What was it for? Do you recall? It was a toy. Um, what are they? Perplexus. It's a, it was like a puzzle toy that my wife got at um, the secondhand store. For my kid and he had played with it for like 10 years and they were throwing it out and she goes do you think you'd use these two domes for anything i'm like i don't know throw it in the stack off well find some use for it so <laughs> make it doing a death star that's a, that'd be a nice addition to your uh how does a person join your lab ch live chat you have to while we're on broadcast you'd have to go to the amazing scale modelers uh youtube channel and it'll be right there Right there, somewhere below, nearby. Um, hi, Joe. Joe also stopped by. And uh, George likes your awesome Death Star. You're doing a good job there, Tony. Don't doubt yourself. If Thanks, it means man. beating you up, uh, that's our job. So don't <laughs> doing stuff that we should be doing. So uh, definitely uh, good good work. And uh, let's see. Uh um, I'm going to go back to Amazing Scale Modelers, and I'm going to share some of my stuff here. Let's see. Uh, I promised uh, – I can get rid of that now. 
I promised that uh, if uh, Mark was uh, watching, he would like to see what I had done. I uh, I screwed up the legs, had to buy the kit over again. So got the legs in, I got it together, and it is here, Mark. So you were inspirational uh, of me trying something different. And as I was doing the final assembly, it kept falling apart. I will never do a Gundam again. <laughs> <laughs> it was insanity. Uh, there's just no, uh, you're just not gluing anything. That's the thing. Just not gluing anything. Uh, but certainly I liked results and I liked uh, what, how it came out and everything. Uh, so that was an in between. I'm going to be working on a thousand scale uh, um, Star Trek Defiant. And I'm going to be lighting it. And I'm just going to take you on a tour on this little thing sitting behind me. I know George wants to see it. I'm going to dim down my camera. Uh, you can glue if you want. You know, I did that. That's how I, I ruined the legs. But now I've got it together. There's certain. I'm not going to use the, the plastic struct, the thin stuff, the ultra thin stuff. You've got to use like testers because it got into the sockets of the ankle and it of course got glued together. Um, old old story, same old story on break. Sorry, uh, Bob, still no models here. Uh, he works at Walmart, but keep on trying there, mister. Because <laughs> we know three Walmart stores that uh, carry models. So there we go. Uh, this, let's uh, click on my image. I'm going to dim down pretty far so the light doesn't uh, bleach it out. Uh, the antenna, the dish I lost, I found, and then the mounting stuff I had to make, scratch make it. And the tip of that thing is actually a missile from one of my jet <laughs> uh, jet uh, builds. Uh, so uh, the lighting is uh, Ralph's, Ralph Tanaglia's uh, from Antenna Controls. Uh, fun, interesting instructions. <laughs> it took me a while to figure them out. Uh, but certainly what really pops on this is Lou's mask, Aztec dummy mask. There's a little view on the inner side here. Let's see. Gonna brighten it up a little bit. I don't have any uh, glamour shots yet. Uh, Matt wants to do them for me. And I got to say, uh, I was successful. I'm pretty happy. There were some troubles. I've had some troubles with it, but certainly I was able to get it together and not make it look too bad. It looks great, Jack. It looks amazing. No, it does look really, really nice. Thank you. If you ever exposed nice cells here. I think in a couple of weeks we should be talking about lighting. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if I can get a guest, maybe even Ralph, to join us. And he can talk about lighting and his boards. I was a little hesitant to buy the boards, uh, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. He, his boards are worth every penny. So there you have it. And I finally broke the curse. I built an enterprise, but it's not a USS enterprise. An NX01 enterprise. <laughs> I'm still holding on. I'm like Tony on this. <laughs> I might ruin something. Uh, so that's what I got done, and I'll be doing a, a thousand scale um, defiant lit too. I'm going to be using different techniques of lighting on that. Uh, a lot of there's going to be fiber optics involved, but I'm only going to use white. And my lights, the the running lights are going to be red and green, of course. But there is a way I'm going to do without using colored LEDs. So that's that's going to be a fun thing to figure out and see if it's going to work. I think it will. Because I did it before. I um, built a uh, Romulan from the TOS, uh, uh, the original series Romulan ship, the Bird of Prey. And the kid has these 
dots that go around in a horseshoe pattern across the top and bottom. And I'm thinking to myself, they look like uh, cloaking device emitters. So what I did was I did uh, clear paint, the fiber optic, and then I just stuck it into the holes. And the ambient light inside the model lit them and it wasn't very bright it was actually pretty dim i do have a picture of it it was on a hangout and that's the only picture that i have of it i don't know where the model is i built so many models and experimented with so many models that uh it took a lot of time a lot of models to get to this level um so we'll, we'll see if that works on this okay anyway uh Let's see where are we at. Uh, now he can conquer the 1701. You're correct. Oh, now that's sexy. <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> uh, running out of battery and charges over. Sorry, Carwin. Enjoy your Super Bowl. He's in England and he's watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's not in England. <laughs> So uh, you know, there was, like I said, uh, there's the lighting kit. Uh, there was uh, I had I bought for this, uh, and, and I there are these uh, little tabs on the edge, which are the thrusters, and there's eight of them in all, four on top, four on the bottom, and I lost a couple of them. So I did mold uh, ones that are were not lost, obviously, and. Um, I replaced them, and it wasn't too, it wasn't too bad. Uh, they, they really looked really good. In fact, I did share them on the uh, communities, but I think I'll share them here. Yeah, they looked really good. They looked better than the kit pieces. I, yeah, I, I'm actually surprised. I'm actually surprised. Uh, the kit piece, of course, is on the right. Uh, the pale one is the resin. Uh, let's see if there's a better picture of this. Your mold's a lot cleaner. You know, you can actually see the thruster ports. Uh, oh, boy, that's blurry. I have a fun, uh, love there. There's a guts. There's one. <laughs> His uh, board. This is what the guts look like. Uh, these are um, uh, fiber optics going to the side. I got these nifty little purple. Stop. I, I call them like, I don't know, navigation emitters for the uh, hatches. That's just something I took liberty with. For the docking ports. The yeah. docking ports, yeah. And I, I think that's awesome because if you ever watch the series, you see those. You do? And yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. I just made them a purple to give it some different color instead of blue or red or orange or, or whatever. Um, going back to the guts. Yeah. Um, I was going to, you know, the pr problem I always have now, his board here, uh, let's see. His board has, uh, I guess, <laughs> uh, 20 gauge or 22 gauge wire that's insulated. And I use magnetic wire, which is even thinner yet. And my problem has always been organizing these things and making it a real mess. So if you noticed that I got like little pieces of tubing, styrene tubing, to act as conduits to keep the wiring organized. Yeah, I'm gonna steal that from you, Jack. And this is uh, resin, five minute, no, actually a uh, five minute epoxy resin and uh, some aluminum tubing because <coughs> the tail was sagging and that's the only thing I could think of to, to support it. Uh, and it, it's solid really solid all right so 
question because I, I use Ralph's boards a lot and the last big build I did was a Voyager. I actually put the boards in my base. Yeah. What do you think, Jack? I mean would you maybe next time you build this you're gonna put the boards in the base instead of in the ship or the reason I put it inside is because there's like eight leads to the nacelles. Um I don't think I have a picture of that. Oh, it's mounting to? All right. I think that's the closest picture I can get to uh, it. There are all these leads. This is uh, These two leads are just lighting the blue. There are these other leads that run the Bessard effect, the, the spinning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted something that I can actually detach. Because I've always had it going through the stand, and the stand is, well, I don't want to pull the stand because it's nice and tight right now, but yeah. the electric just is one of these, and, and it just yep. right in. Okay? So I can transport it, or I can even take this and possibly <laughs> hang it. I was even considering putting a port on top because there's a little do that right here that could probably act as a plug uh, if I wanted to hang it and still light it. Um, and this is a wall wart. So I don't think a battery is going to last very long on this. No, 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 no. I think, actually... it, think it pulls down uh, about 0.7 amps. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually uh, one of the projects I'm going to do this year is go through all the stuff that I actually battery lit and actually yeah. plug-ins and redo that because I just hate changing batteries. It's a nice start, but my Pegasus, I've had to change the battery in three times just to get the lighting up and stuff. So uh, this, is, hardwire. this is what that uh, molded piece, piece looks like when it's painted and a, a part of the model. This is this is a replacement piece. This is not from the kit. I mean, that's amazing. I, I I'm gonna go. Hey, uh, so when I get the ship from you, um, you gonna throw in eight of those? <laughs> I'll give you the mold. <laughs> uh, this is the underside. This is uh, this is the kit. Uh, let me let me zoom oh, in. That is some. I love how you blended the Aztec in. That's just seamless. Uh, you know, this is the first time I did it, and when I've seen other people's, not to be too critical of other people's work, um, I found other people making the contrast too severe. Yeah. You know? Too dramatic and, a change. Yeah. Right. I right. love that. Oh, these are actually LEDs. This is not uh, fiber optics. These are directly LEDs. These are purple too. This is on the underside uh, as well. And I wanted to show here uh, the, the things that you could add on, not just the LEDs, but because of the nature of what this is with the decals. Because, you know, uh, on like jets or like the ejection seat things, danger on ejection seats on the side of the aircraft. And I always pictured that, you know, sometimes you've got to light something like that to call more attention to it. <laughs> so this is why I did what I did here is to call more attention to it. And I'm actually surprised the decals fit perfectly alongside those uh, uh, ports. Oh, for God, those that's things. amazing. And there's a close-up of my makeshift um, antenna. I had lost the mount and the tip. I even lost the dish, and I ended up finding it somewhere, and uh, and I just uh, just fudged it. This is the kind of thing you got to do. Uh, and I and if I recall right, I there's also another uh, part that's missing on this. And I built up, I made a styrene piece for it back when I started this about five, maybe six years ago, and I wasn't that experienced in it. And I kind of. But you know what? I'm gonna hold off on this, and because I, I, I really didn't do much of anything. I only uh, I only glued the sidewalls on the bottom part. The bottom saucer is all I did then, and there were parts already missing because my workspace was really bad. 
And if I like, that's why I built this big desk because I know how I am with, with parts. I tend to lose them if I'm in a small little confined space. Uh, so uh, this is one of my favorite shots right here. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, this, the sun was coming through the window and this tells me I, I'm, I did what I wanted to do, make that contrast, but not so severe. It's it's beautiful. I used uh, the dark is uh, gunmetal, uh, Vallejo gunmetal, and the light is steel. The light is steel. It's amazing. And I used uh, plastic spoons. I brushed up a bunch of plastic spoons put the color side by side and that's how i end up picking these colors but well, that's not mine <laughs> <laughs> but this is this was my inspiration of doing the aztecs without being so severe because i see this is to me just right so, uh, that was my inspiration to do it the way i did but really uh when when my my curiosity is when we were talking about the 3D printing yesterday on across the pond, uh, you can build entire models uh, and parts as as uh, Stephen was saying, uh, but you can mold a piece. Here's the mold. Nice. And uh, I actually had to. <laughs> I measure the resin in drops, not in volume, just drip, 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 count the drips and mix it together. And I had a lot left over. I think it was 20 drops in total between the two sides. And I filled it in using a toothpick, one drop at a time, uh, because you want the, the what's on top flat because whenever you put them into a spot here, if it bubbles up, It'll bubble down and it won't fit. It won't settle in there. Yeah. And trying to sand it is a pain in the butt. Yeah, there's different. You know, there's lo there's lots of techniques to use to replace missing parts or stuff like that. I mean, uh, even like say in Buck's case, I mean he's going his ways around it with his plane. Um, myself, I probably would have before dinning, I would have filled the area in with plaster Paris and made a buck and then I, I might have vacuum formed a new canopy for it well you know I thought about that but uh, if he's if, when you go back to the picture yeah there's no detail for it it's just open it's completely open and all the details actually in the clear piece yeah to separate the windows so um, I thought about doing that but it would have just been one big windscreen Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, I could have, you know, added my pieces to, to do it, but um, after thinking about it for a while, Jim, I, I think the tarp's going to give it a lot more character. Yeah, no, no, it's a different, it's a different look. So I mean, it's perfectly mm -hmm. fine with the tarp. I mean, that you're going for that, that look that they would use, especially in the sandy desert areas, in order to protect the screen from getting pitted getting sandblasted so they would they would cover them up but yeah you know i i was trying to think of every way to to highlight that canopy and fix the canopy and i was like yeah you know what i'm gonna try this because i want to get my scratch building skills better yeah so uh, i said you know what i'm gonna try this out the funny thing is it's like a, it, it took me like five minutes I cut the piece, I trimmed the piece. Yeah. And then I just heat gunned it and I, I made it to where it looked good to me. And you know, but yeah, I, I definitely need to get me a Yeah, um, some people yeah, yeah like use you, you styrene. I've seen yeah. other people make tarps out of uh, with tissue paper and white glue. You know, basically what I did was I took a excuse me, okay. I took a piece of this. Uh, 0 0.005. I cut a square. Yeah. Laid it over the plane, trimmed it to where I wanted, and then I heat gunned it. Yeah. 
melted the crust, you know, shrunk it up, and then I trimmed off the pieces I didn't want and made sure it folded to the, the nose of the plane the way I wanted. And, yeah. But then, like I said, then I have all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got all your rigging. Yeah. Oh, my God. Where is Randall when I, you know, I, I want to give him such mad props and he's not even on tonight. No, uh, he's got a function tomorrow, so he couldn't make it. Um, but um, I like to have had uh, Jay on, and yeah. he, he had sent me the um, actorizing parts for the Defiant kit, the USS Defiant kit in Star Trek. And you know what? I'm going to pick up the camera again and show these off. Yep. Um, Cause these these I, I'm not I don't wanna I don't wanna well, maybe I will open them. Yeah, where have, the heck has he been lately? I don't know. For a while. He comes and goes. Uh okay, he's got a lot of flash, but there's a reason for it because some of this, some of these parts are pretty small. <laughs> he basically hand makes these. And that's the uh, 420, right? This is a 537 uh, scale kit. This is a right. This is the kit that uh, they broke the mold. Yeah. They don't make them anymore. Yeah, I know. Freaking eBay's getting stupid on their pricing on them. And hey, look! I still haven't got the uh, the metal mesh yet from him. I gotta <laughs> do not go. Where the hell is that? I'd like to know where he gets the metal mesh, but I'm sure you can buy them at uh, maybe a railroad. Model railroad. Uh, yeah. Model railroad. Uh, in fact, even uh, Tony was saying he needed something from them doing his uh, Death Star because getting all the unfinished work. So uh, this is these are not 3D printed. He he actually made these by hand. These parts. Um, it took him a long time too, for that matter. Oh yeah. But um, I got to say, the quality that he put put out is actually very good, and that too in itself is uh, admirable. Because a lot of times somebody can do these parts, and but they they can't mold anything, and vice versa. Sometimes you get somebody who does a really good job of molding. And reproducing stuff, but maybe not so much making the stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. But there's, like I said, I have a drawer. I actually pulled it, um, and I'm sure, and I'm one of those builders that always have parts left at the end of a build. Um, but I don't miss them. A lot of the parts that I have, like the antenna, was the uh, one of the missiles on the one of the jets that I built. Like a, yeah. I don't know. Even an F-18 or something. Yeah, for us, we always get parts of because sometimes with some models, there's shared sprues between different models. So you end yep. up with parts that don't belong to the models you built, but so you got all these extra parts left over. Well, that's a very big thing with AMT cars because uh, they do have a lot of shared uh, sprues too, like you said. And you do end up with a lot more parts. That, um, like on this thing, there were these really tiny little, they look like little tiny antennas. I'm not putting those on. Come on. <laughs> Just not going to do it. But they're, they're, they're tiny. They're probably about a millimeter and a half wide. Maybe even less. I just don't want to deal with that. Um, I even had decals that I ended up with. I don't know why, but I did. And I, I know why. I, I wasn't really paying attention, but of course, you guys didn't notice where the decals didn't end up being. Uh, but you can save decals. I have a drawer of decals too from uh, the experiments that I've done on kits and never built the kit, and I have leftover decals. Uh, you can use decals on different things too if you wanted to do kind of, I don't know, a completely scratch build. And I know there was some, at some point, there was a, a uh, one of the communities uh, did do basically a leftover build of, of a kit, of a bunch of kits. Uh, if you save yeah. everything, you can actually build something crazy with it. Um, make a basically um, like a Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah, make a what if build. Yeah. A what if build. 
um, definitely. Um, so, yeah, and photo etch, that's another thing too. I have a lot of photo etch uh, left over. Like I used the photo etch uh, for my Millennium Falcon. I only used a cockpit, I didn't use anything else. So, um, yeah, you can have a lot of parts and play. Oh yeah. Play fun. Uh, there's something on the MeWe community that I think you'd be interested in. The guy's a professional, I know he is. Uh, David Kopielski. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. No, he did a beautiful job on that. Uh, that's an F-18. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a bane of my existence. I'm going to build one. I'm on my third kit. I can't seem to get it together. But it is, it is I, I think, in some sense, it's a more complicated build than the other jets that are out there. I don't know why. I guess that's just me. But this oh, is beautiful. Wow. Well, uh, Buck, can you do something like this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. That yeah, that's beautiful. Pretty. Of course, mine's going to probably look a little more worn, but yeah, that's... That's... Well, that's a two-seater F-18. Uh-huh. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, on the... nice. Yeah, you know, Jack, you, the last time we talked, you're like, yeah, you might just want to stick with military stuff with the planes, because I, you know, you know, I love I love all the genres. Um, I love building the starships and the, the space vehicles because I get to light them. But I might have to transfer that into military aircraft. Um, see what I can do with that. Well, here's another example of cars uh, yeah. on the Facebook community. Todd uh, Buckles. It's a Monte Carlo, I think. Eh? Yeah, it is a Monte Carlo. I think a 79. Uh, Two-ton. Very nice. A challenge. A two-ton is always a challenge. Notice the de how the decal is running along the the split between the colors. See, it's like this because of your painting skills. I think you would enjoy doing shit like this. I really do. No, well, I'm gonna have to get a kit and try it out. Oh, oh wow. that's nice. Look at that. I'm using a little bit of wash to highlight that grill. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he used uh, auto paint for this, or is it like to me? Well, or it's a metal flake paint, but it's a pretty fine metal flake, a little finer than what you get with a lot of the auto paints. So, so that's wow. always that's, that's always a thing to watch with the auto paints, especially if it's got fleck in it, to make sure it's dust and not particles, or it just looks way out of scale. <laughs> Yeah. That's very nice. Um, you were even talking about even having uh, 3D printed hubcaps and yep. um, and wheel rims for yep. cars. Well, those 3D printers, I mean, I, I wish I could afford one, but, you know, they just open up our, our hobby so much. I mean... The, the things we can add, the things we can do. I mean, yeah. it, it and, just... And there's basic software. You can do something like Tinkercad, which is a very basic 3D software because it just works with objects. You just yeah. manipulate the object. So you can create all kinds of stuff with that just by manipulating uh, physical forms and that. So, oh, I yeah. mean, it's an easy way to get into design and that with the 3D printer and that. And they said building models would never take us anywhere. <laughs> right. And you you said that you'd like to have your airplanes a little worn. Uh, you can do your cars a little worn, too. Ooh. That's that's very nice. Uh, there's something uh, kitschy about a v, VW bug. A Beetle? Yeah. 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 It's such an iconic car. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
See, the paint isn't exactly shiny. It's dull. Mm -hmm. That's... That's just... In a racing match, who would win? <laughs> Depends how long the run is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put my money on Prime. <laughs> I, that's some nice weathering right there. Yeah. I'm not going to learn to do something like that. That looks like a little more like dirt, not so much rust. It's more like dirt. Yeah. All right, what are you guys doing over there at the live chat, huh? Let's see. Building models has literally taken me all over the world. Yeah, he was saying that, I guess, that Carwin. Uh, Carwin said that. Certainly. Who's winning, Carwin? Yeah, uh, last score was uh, uh, a while ago. Patriots, I believe. Of course. Because they're course. cheating. That's why. That's why they're winning. They're cheating. Oh. <laughs> the Pats. Well, of course. That's who. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know if he's cheering for any team, but I know he likes American football, which is kind of unusual. Uh, Joe says too. Uh, Joe McCaslin. He always has parts left over at the end of a build. Uh, what do you do with them, Joe? Uh, so that would be nice to know what you do with your parts. Um. Yeah, because he, he does the cutaway and the little scratch building, if you recall his work. Yeah, so he has quite a bit of parts of the original kit put aside for all his new <laughs> Right. Uh, let's see. There's a more lowest scoring first half in 20 years, 3 0. Uh, probably. I was just being. Oh, they have him to a field goal. It's either a good game or boring. <laughs> Uh, I can't. I don't think I was able to find anything of yours. Uh, let's see, Joe. Uh, Joe, come on. I don't know how to type. That's what I do for a living. Yeah, Joe's got the one the planes going on right now, so it should. I know he published some pictures on it. Oh, true. Hey, Tony. Question. How'd you do the detail work on the bottom in those cuts, Well, uh, I used a hot knife to cut the basic shapes out as as fine as I could with that. <laughs> and then I found a punch that is just a, a rectangle. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it, but it's just a hand punch It's from like Hobby Lobby. Oh, nice. And the shape is a rectangle. So then I'm just going in and chopping the edges up. It's not as small as it needs to be for this scale, but it's all they had, so. Still looks good, brother. <laughs> and then I'm using this stuff for some of the, uh, oh, you know, nice. under yep. construction. But it's diamond, and it doesn't, I really need a square mesh, which I have not been able to find yet. So I'm going to keep looking. Um, uh, Jim was telling me about the, the photo etch place, Eduardo or Edward. Edward, yeah. And they have um, railing sets for like one eight hundred scale ships, which would probably be about the right size that I need. And they so, have all kinds of mesh too. Yeah, I'm gonna look into that. So we'll see. Nice, I, dude. It's just amazing. I mean, <laughs> I can't wait to see that finish. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this isn't one of the ones I get halfway through and then throw against the garage door over here. Uh, <laughs> no, that's that's only AMT models, man. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the C uh, the the C one seventeen I've spent a while building, but you know, there's guys like Lou, you know, who can. You know, he's retired, so he gets to spend a lot more time doing it. But, you know, there's people like, oh, I could build this in a week. I go, really? How good is it really going to look in a week? Yeah. Because, you know? I mean, I've probably spent the last two weeks just doing touch-ups and reprint, you know. These guys have built stuff in a couple of weeks. It just amazes me. And here we are 
Jim, how long have you been working on the lifeboat? Uh, since uh, before Christmas. And then, you know, Jack got the NX01 done pretty quick, but hell, he was on vacation for quite a while. I, yeah, yeah, I, I had a lot of uh, time off over the holidays, and I, I was just, uh, you know, by myself. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, yeah, you can spend eight, nine hours at the bench. It's amazing what you get done. Oh, certainly. I, I don't spend much time of anything on the bench uh, but, uh, during the weekday after work. I'm just too tired. I'm just too mentally wasted. I get kind of used to the long builds. I mean, my T Rex took five months to build and stuff like that. My uh, battleship Bismarck, that was a seven month build. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sort of used to long builds. <laughs> yeah. Here's a, here's a good. Uh, uh, live chat thing ken skiffington you know he's the master scratch builder yeah, and joe, yeah. joe says uh when he comes to the extra parts he says most of them are still on the sprues and boxes in the basement well i take him off the sprue because sprues take up too much space in the basement that's what i do but he says he keeps them in the basement and ken says send them to me <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to see that King get finished with the Borg uh, uh, discovery. You know, right? Right. What's that and, done? Uh, this is something you don't see too often. Now, is that right? Oh wow! That's one of the. Uh, I guess one of the pirate series. No, well, speaking oh. of uh, parts, um, I understand that these things, these. Uh, what do they call it? The rope ladders? The rattlings? Is that what they're called? Rattlings, yeah. Uh, some of the kits are made of plastic and sometimes they're warped. Yeah. So they have a natural drape to them. Uh, certainly you can probably buy fabric ones. or. Uh, oh, you can do make them up out of thread. You yeah. can make them out of thread. There's lots of tutorials how to make a rattling jig and uh, to make your own. So there's lots of, you can make them. They're, once you build, make the jig, they're real easy. Yeah, you can see that kind of bow. Yeah, yeah. that's to the plastic ones, yeah. But still, that's a beautiful build. Yeah, it's one of Look the... all that rigging. That's one of the Limburg, Limburg pirate ships, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really have found out I don't like rigging. <laughs> uh randall likes it he loves it <laughs> yeah well you know what i'll paint and build and i'll send it to him to do the rigging Are we gonna rig my <laughs> why do you think i'm practicing son <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna rig the titanic yeah, What's yeah. That? oh he's asking me are we gonna rig his titanic i go yeah why do you think i'm practicing right now no, we're not shipping the Titanic to England. You, heard, you know what happened the last time Titanic tried to make a cross-ocean voyage? <laughs> what? First time, only time, and last time. All three. <laughs> uh, you know, Carwin may be watching the Super Bowl, but he's pretty clever with, uh, uh, with scratch goats. Uh, this is his uh, a fifth element police car. Oh, nice. Um, but he, he did say in, uh, let's see, get up here. Are those in the oven? You might get a kick out of this. There's a couple of picks, uh, two scratch built kit bash models I made when I was about 19, inspired by the models in the fifth exactly. battle. Nice. The police car about four inches was made from a cheap vac form shell. And the taxi cab was made of a toy frame, about three inches. Long. So there. So this is a, a prime example of using things uh, of, of parts that are not normally parts. That's a pretty. That's a pretty uh, nice build, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Aside from liking the Super Bowl.
And of course, uh, this is, oh, oh gosh, what happened here? Can't help but get a little sci-fi in. Chuck Brooks is amazing. Um, Hello, guys. This is his Tinga. Yeah. Oh, wow. Does that look somewhat familiar there? <laughs> yeah. I'm actually holding mine right here. Uh, this is a 350 one they just came out with. Oh. Now, I don't know if he used the uh, Polar Lights lighting kit. It's actually really good. I like his paint because it's much more subtler than, I, again, I, my paint's going to be subtle on this. I don't know if I can get a picture of the wings. Oh, come on. There we go. Wow. The contrast between the greens isn't that terrific. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would probably make this contrast maybe slightly less and sort of darken up that beige. But of mm -hmm. course, you can darken up the beige with, uh, with, uh, I don't know, with weathering, weathering. Um, I'm thinking graphite, but you could probably use pigment powders to do it. And yes, and uh, you, you know, Buck, I would really recommend that you look at, watch the video from across the pond yesterday. The Katinga was the star of the show when it came to uh, 3D printing. Uh, Stephen Burns did had a series of things. Uh, in fact, why don't I show you? Why not? Uh, he's doing uh, a kit for the 350 TOS, replace the bridge. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I know I'm getting close. <laughs> This is why I don't like Facebook. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, he designed that insert. Yeah. You cut a hole in the nacelle and uh, he 3D prints inserts. I really like that. Pretty snazzy, eh? Damn right it is. Um, where's his design? He's also doing uh, torpedo launch tubes. Oh, see, that's awesome because what the the. the from the bird of prey to the Katinga to any of those uh, Cleon vessels, I mean, the bullets just don't give justice to the torpedo tubes. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, I really want to show the, the resin of what it looks like uh, without all the schmanciness. Uh, he's got a short version. I think this is the short version, and there's a longer version. I'm not sure where that is. Let's see. He's a, he's a 3D graphic artist. Uh, the lighting of it with uh, yeah. three LED strips. I like the board.
All right, well, there's the back side of it. Yeah. That's freaking cool. So, I'm not sure how one would uh, do this by scratch. Because he was saying there's a oval hole. Here it is. A short version and a long version. You want to have the holes a little bigger, but the 3D printer is uh, going already reaching its tolerance. Okay. And uh, I made a suggestion that perhaps those that background could be photo etch. As photo oh, etch, you if you have a photo etch that does that, it will definitely help light block the entire piece as well. Yeah. But I'd like to see somebody make this by hand. <laughs> Yeah, not going to happen. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, anybody else got uh, something to add? Uh, you were talking about Gripville. When, uh, when's uh, Amazing Scale Models, what are we going to do this year? Well, I, I, we never really talked about it. Um, I mean, you brought it up, Jack. So I know uh, I brought it up, but I, you know. Yeah, you know, like, really you here. I think what's really popular, though, is tribute builds uh, when somebody passes, uh, somebody's dying. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of morbid. All right, we're dying every day, Jack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tribute builds would be good. And there was this idea to do a build for charity, but I don't know how that would happen. Um, we had a couple of build tribute charity. We also had an idea of a group build where everyone builds the same kit. Yeah, building the Ooh. same thing. I'm sorry, but the budget does not allow for the Katinga right now. It wouldn't be a Katinga, but yeah. No, it wouldn't be a Katinga. It would be, <laughs> be like a, a car or an airplane. F-18. An F-18. <laughs> um, and make it something that it's not. There's always that. Uh, build, yeah. it, build it not as it is, but build it as what you could be. Uh, there's yeah. people doing uh, car, airplane cars out of airplanes, airplanes, cars, spaceships. You know, I don't know. Uh, there's just a lot there uh, to do, and just needed to, more of a gear up. Just didn't make any decisions at the end of last year. I kind of like to do it during the year. Uh, but if you have any ideas. I will definitely email them. All right. Well, don't have to email them. Just say, hey. Well, I, I'm, I'm into, like Jen said, I think something the last couple of years I haven't seen is everybody building the same kit, and it would be awesome to see everybody's interpretation of it. Their interpretation of the kit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think it, you know, like you said, it'd have to be something readily available. You know, yeah, and like car or a uh, plane. Car, you know? all smaller aircraft, whichever, yeah. You know, World War II or modern era, you know, planes. I mean, I, I really do. I like building a modern aircraft, but I really love building. Classic aircraft? Yeah. yeah, you know, the Corsair, the F-4, or the, you know, P90 and the P30 or something like sword yeah. whatever yeah. yeah I think I think what would be good you you uh way the way secret santa works uh you pick a, a name and then you send them a kit <laughs> yeah, I love that idea and uh I we would have to restrict the cost it couldn't be more than x amount of dollars but yeah um, like a thirty dollar kit, maybe, and you know, yeah, pull a name out of a, you. You put your name in a hat, and you pull a name, and you've got to send that kit to that person, and they got to send it back finished. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Mm -hmm. That would be oh. a new twist to it. Um, you just, you just but, I, something. What's I, that? I think. Sorry, Tony. No, go ahead. No, you, go ahead. Ahead. you go ahead. <laughs> Um, the, the, the roles we applied was, uh, the secret center that I did this year for, um, hobby builders was, uh, the, the limit should have been about 20 to 25 because we know most kits, you can't 
get under $25. Uh, but it says, you know, you can do whatever you want. And then, you know, you kind of tell everybody what you like to do and they can choose from there. And I think one of the greatest things is because I've only built one tank. Um, <laughs> I got this this year, which I'm going to have a lot of fun doing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Sherman. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea, Jack. I mean, do, do like, okay, group build this year, let's put our, you know, names in the hat and, you know, we'll do a random drawing and tell us what you want, you know, and do that. And I think sending the kid back to our secret Santa or, or whoever got it would be awesome because then they have something that we did and we have something they did. Well, I think it, I think uh, what we would end up doing is sharing each other's work is, I think, would be an interesting thought. Um, not just get a kit and build it and keep it for yourself, but to, yeah. you know, give it away. And give it away, not give it away, just give it back. I mean, if you send me a kit, I build it and I send it back to you and you have something yeah. fine. Well, actually from you. Yeah, yeah. right. Um and you can choose whatever kit it is under a certain dollar amount just so it doesn't get too crazy. Oh, my God. I mean, it won't be Katingas. It won't be, you know, an X01. <laughs> it won't be 1350 uh, Enterprises. I think the genre would have to. I, I, I would because sci-fi kits are expensive. Uh, they, they are most, the, on average, are the more expensive kits. Than I, I, other kits I think you would, you're right. You have to keep it to planes or automobiles. Well, I am. Planes, trains, or automobiles. There you yeah, go. There you yeah. Go. Or, you know, because we, we can always throw Jack from the train. So. Yeah, and certain military subjects. Yeah. What have I done to uh, endure this kind of abuse? <laughs> <laughs> or what haven't I done? <laughs> but that's that's okay. actually that's actually okay. a good idea. Uh, uh, build a kit that's not uh, not resembling the uh, box art. I think will be okay. Um, doing that, a secret Santa, giving away, you know, your work to someone else um, and get someone else's in return. The idea is to do a good job. Do the oh, yeah. Job. Yeah. No. Do what you do. Do your best. Because <laughs> then, you, then you can say, oh, look what I got from, you know, Buck, and it's a pile of styrene with glue dumped on it. <laughs> it's a work of art. It's a work of art. It's interpretive art, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I this year seems to be kind of definitely geared around uh, aircraft. I mean, like I said, I showed my dad stuff. I got to get that on him for him. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna build. Uh, definitely gonna build the uh, the Hornet, and hopefully, I can do her justice. Never built a boat before, so a ship. Um, so the Hornet's a nice lead into to helping Jacob with his Titanic. <laughs> and, uh, Is he drawing all those windows? Oh, uh, we're actually getting ready because, you know, I told him, hey, but we need to start taping up seam lines for your Cleon Warbird. Mm -hmm. I forgot to explain that we have to work little bits at a time, so he actually taped them all up. Mm. Sorry. No, it's fine, dude. Um, so... I, 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 put a background camera there. I, I want to look at that. I want to get a nice look at that. Oh, he did a really okay. good job of taping. All right. He's doing good. Yeah. But... Um, but like I tell him, you know, and like we were talking earlier, don't rush your builds. You rush nope. your builds. Something's Take your happen. time. Yep. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back through with them on the seam lines, and we're going to pull some tape back, and we're going to work certain sections and get those done and then do it, move on to another section. We'll put another layer on that. Yep. Another and on that. Well, what we would do is – uh, do that build exchange, and I would uh, contribute maybe something to charity of your choice. 
So it could be a charity thing, sort of. You send me a kit, I build it for you, and then you pay me by sending $20 to the SPCA or something like that. I like that. I really do like that. Uh, for the... Speak up. No. Talk to Jill and talk to Jill. Uh, for the San Secret Santa thing, instead of giving the kit back, why not sell it back for a reasonable price? Mm -hmm. So you get the money that you used and donate some of that the money to charity. Used, and then you can donate that to charity. Well, yeah, that would that was an idea to do that on eBay, but I'm um okay. But uh, mine sure. mine would yield like five dollars, and that's fine. Yeah, well, well that's the problem <laughs> is what I've been explaining to him because I I, I really want to do commission bills, but I, I liked your idea, Jack, that they buy what I build. Not what, you know, hey, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. Oh, by the way, um, I hope you're not too far in it because I really want you to add this. No, this is what I do by what I, you know, you like what I build, here you go. But like you said, Jack, you know, the, the problem I've had with trying to get commission work is they go, oh, well, the kit was only 25 bucks. Why are you charging me a thousand dollars? Yeah. Well, it's called your time. Well, exactly, but they don't they understand. Don't believe that they don't understand that. I mean, come on, look the C one seventeen. I've spent probably better part of three months working on. Yeah, and I probably have over a hundred hours into it already. Mm -hmm. But yeah, oh well, I can buy that kit for for thirty bucks. I said, you know what, you go buy that kit and you build it the way I do. Better for you. Uh, well, like there is there, there is a way to do. I, I really do want to do a charity build of some sort, and I mean I the charity that. backed up with bucks. Uh, mm -hmm. So much sort of uh, cancer awareness, which is a great build to do. Uh, tributes to maybe like George Barris or something like that, which mm -hmm. is fine and dandy. But I there there was a there was an attempt to do that early on in the community, but I don't know. Um, well, it just fell apart. It didn't. Not, nothing got ever done on it. And there is a way to do uh, the the uh, eBay, like your son said, uh, to pay for it and, and contribute it to charity. And I'd say that's that's all fine and good. But I think everybody's build should uh, be, you know earning some bucks for the charities that's all I'm saying. yeah you know I, I i actually agree with you you know on the point of hey you know build this and then i'll donate 25 or 50 bucks to whatever you know to a charity we all choose you know i mean i'm more partial to uh veteran organizations because i'm and I'm more partial. I'm, that's my second partiality, actually. My first is uh, pet rescues, uh, animal yeah, rescues. Uh, dude, you, you see the little devils that I have in this house. <laughs> You've already done your part. <laughs> you know, but I'm also, you know, I'm a big part to, to funding pet rescue. I think, was, I think, you know what, I mean, if it's going to be like a, uh, a armor build, yeah, veteran, that just makes sense, you know? Yeah. And car build we can do to pet rescue or whatever. Well, George um, was saying, how about an uh, ASM auction just between us idiots? Um, auction? I don't think auction. So. I'll auction off my entire pancreas. <laughs> oh. Hey, Tony, will you give me $10 for my stash? <laughs> you pay shipping. <laughs> right. No, I'm, you know, I really. I don't know, George, that, that sounds, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't see that, George, I don't see that any different as um, maybe doing something on eBay because eBay will be, is basically an auction. It's just yeah. a fancy schmancy auction. But I think, though, um 
it, it would be nice that if I did a build for you and I'm the one, you know, not, not only giving you my work, but also uh, contributing uh, a nominal amount to a charity that of your choice. Um, I mean, there's a lot of veteran um, charities for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a complex thing. I, I don't know how enthusiastic people will be about it. I think that it needs to be discussed on a larger scale. Maybe people that are interested in doing something like that should be talking about it. But I don't know what they would be talking about. I don't, I don't know. They, they don't have the cameras and the microphones, but they certainly have a way to communicate somehow with each other, such as uh, Messenger and even... I thought I'd be actually doing a Twitter, but I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure I'm fond of doing a Twitter. I have, I have a, I have a ideologic, ideological difference with... Uh, with, with Twitter? With uh, Jack Dem Durst, Dursey, 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 whatever the hell his name is. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. There, there, there is something we can do as a community and do something good. Uh, and I don't know how other communities do it. I don't participate in them. Um, I did a, I wanted to do the cancer awareness like Bob Busking does. Yeah. Uh, build a blue car. Uh, but I, I think that's that you know awareness is one thing, you know. But I think actually being active and doing something. Yeah, you know, donate, like you said, Jack. Say you send me a kit and I donate to charity of your choice. I build a kit and then I donate to the charity of your choice. And say I'm your recipient. I think that would be okay. I think that'd be uh, okay. You don't have to give it back. No. You can keep it for. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I give the kid back, and then I put twenty-five to fifty bucks towards your choice. Same way, you know, if you're building a kit for me, you send it back, and then you know, donate to my choice. Mm -hmm. And then I think everybody would be happy because we all have very special charities that we we contribute to. Mm -hmm. Well, the last one I did uh, was the Fraternal Order of Police uh, here mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, and now the the firemen are calling me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you donate to the police; they want their money. Huh? <laughs> they want their money too, brother. Yeah. <laughs> the word is out. Jack's got the money. Uh, yeah, they've all sh they've all shared their donor list. Yeah, uh, but I we we've had some. We've had some incidences here in Pittsburgh, not just this past uh, season with the synagogue uh, shooting, but uh, several years ago, um, there was two policemen that were uh, killed in line of duty by just serving a uh, warrant of arrest. Uh, the guy just flipped, and the guy, he denies it even to this day it was him. He's a little, little cuckoo. Uh, but that was probably one of the first big time tragedies for police and uh, uh, certainly our, our police are having their issues just like every police department is but anyway that 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 is an idea and I, I think there'll be a lot of people that would be interested in contributing to a charity but I think it should be selfless in the sense of not just yours but maybe uh, for someone else, uh, like yeah. you have the veterans, I have the uh, pet rescues, uh, and even the fraternal order of police, or something like that. I think that would be a good. And Jim has the uh, snow removal community. Well, now Jim, uh, his his charity is to build a wall between the U.S. and uh, Canada. Well, mine's probably the one I invest is is the my uh, local the armor the. Uh, Armor Museum that we Armor have. Museum. There you go. There you go. That works. What about you, Tony? Tony? Yeah. Do you have a charity uh, that you like? Uh, Sam Adams. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Adams. <laughs> uh, yes. 
You mean to say that I could contribute to my southern tier? Yeah. I, I'm waiting for summer L to come rolling out. I am so tired of winter. I'm waiting for summer to come. I well, your summer. tires like a month long, and it only gets above freezing. You still have snow during the summer, don't you? Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. All right. We've talked enough about it. And if you have any comments about what we just talked about, any ideas, any desire to even do it, show it, make a comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, especially the comments. I do get around to addressing each and every one of them, or at least like them, acknowledge that I've seen them. Please, uh, I think this is an interesting thing we should uh, uh, pursue, or I think we're a big enough community to do it, both between MeWe and the Facebook community particularly. And, uh, and it's all to do with our hobby and to uh, basically share ourselves with our fellow hobbyists as well as to their favorite charities. So, like I said, I want to see some creativity with shop cards here. And if you've got some good computer designs or whatever you want to do a shop card, you think ASM, maintenance skill modelers, that's uh, the rules are just make sure ASM is on there, uh, maintenance skill modelers on there, and that we are a MeWe Facebook community. Uh, throw in, throw in maybe perhaps the YouTube too, um, and that's pretty much it that I would probably would want on there. That sort of thing. Uh, and you can submit these uh, to me directly if you would like by email to my email at scratchandjackmodels at gmail.com. And if you do email it and we like it, we'll talk amongst ourselves with the, with the community as well as the um, moderators and say, hey, this is actually a pretty cool shop card. Let's get it printed. And we'll get it printed and uh, we'll send them out to you all, especially the ones who uh, participate in that. I like to see some creativity otherwise. We should send each other our unfinished kits for the others to finish. Do all the parts come with them? A shelf queen kit, shelf queen squat, what? Carwin, yeah. that's not a bad idea. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a good idea. Uh, so maybe that would be a good one. But anyway, uh, if you're on a Google Plus community, please, 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 it's going to be over less than a month. It's going to shut down. If you are interested in participating and staying hanging with us, it's the Facebook community or MeWe.com. Instructions to get to MeWe.com is on the Google Plus community as of the 28th of February. It will be gone. I swear to God, it'll be gone. Done. Closed. Finis. But until two weeks from now, across the pond and, of course, the Sunday Hangout, we'll have some more. I'm working on something to do something uh, just like we've been doing. Uh, we've done the 3D printing this past across the pond. We had the Jamie uh, Hood on from uh, Polar Lights. He was a product developer for them. Uh, lots of interesting things. There's a lot of people I need to contact and get commitments to do hangouts with us. So, yeah, keep tuned in and subscribe. Uh, be merry. Happy uh, modeling, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.